because this is probably the best part of doing a little project like this. Hello everyone, it's Nicole from Pixel Maven's Retreat and welcome to this Pixel Maven project tutorial. So don't adjust your screen and don't change the video. I know you've already seen this card and you know there's already a video out there on how I created this, but I wanted to show you another super easy way that you can use this brand new cut file from scrapbook.com. I hope you already picked yours up. If you didn't, there are links in this video description for you to go ahead and get that. Um, so get the file and I'm going to show you a different way to use it other than this most basic of ways. So this one is slightly more than basic. I'm using the cut file as a stencil and this uh, design came from all the prompts for the latest Festive Friday challenge which is celebrating Boss's Day. And the three elements that I used were floral, metallics, and a gift card enclosure. And this is actually a gift card as well. So I'm going to show you how I created this gift card and we're going to go ahead and work on some stenciling with our cut file. All right, so I have the cut file done on some scrap card stock and the cool thing about this is I'm going to be able to use this when I'm done to create a second card. So I have here a piece of cilantro from Lawn Fawn and it's larger than what I need, which is uh, perfect because that way I can get this all taped on here without it any problem. So just use some post-it tape to get the top and bottom in place. And that should be good. So I'm trying to make sure that the tape doesn't extend into the area that I'm going to cut off eventually. So I don't have to worry about doing any other blending over this later. Okay, so this is just a two color blend because the third color is actually the cardstock underneath, right? So I'm gonna start with some pine needles and I'm going to do this a little light to begin with and then let the color darken up. So the one thing I have to be careful about is this H here. So I am just gonna kind of streak this up so that way I'm not moving that little piece. Now, if I had thought ahead, I probably would have put some temporary adhesive and uh, that would have really helped to make sure that that little piece stayed in place. But that's the only little piece that I need to worry about. So definitely be making sure that you know your stencil and exactly what you may have to worry about uh, in those kinds of situations. So you can always give it a try on a scrap piece ahead of time and make sure that you're getting kind of the desired effect that you're looking for. So now I can go ahead and add in some more ink as I want. And the cool thing about this is that if I go a little lighter, I'm gonna end up with a lighter shade of green. And of course, if I go darker, it's gonna get darker. So that will all help uh, make this look really cool with all sorts of different shades of color. So that's actually pretty good with my pine needles. And I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the chipped sapphire to basically come back in and fill in the rest of the space. I may need to come back with the uh, pine needles just to do some blending in areas if I've got uh, two colors uh, kind of butting up against each other. So I'm just kind of filling this in. And the cool thing about this is, as you can see, um, I am, because the stencil is made of cardstock, I'm trying to make sure that I get this whole piece of cardstock covered uh, at the same time. So I'm basically doing two cards in, at the same time right now. So on the top here, I'm trying to make sure that I have a really good blend, but that also makes a really good blend underneath. So go ahead and just bring this around. And you can see that I'm getting like a lighter blend here, which I think is really cool. And then I'll bring this down towards the bottom. And that's pretty good. If I wanna get this corner, I can too.
Okay, so now I have a pretty neat blend going on. I may actually go back into the pine needles and see about getting this color represented just in a few other ways. So I'll get this kind of back around the high here, make it really dramatic. And then I'm just going to kind of blend back out, like maybe up in this corner a little bit. And you're going to see how the two colors really blend together to make kind of a third color, right? So you've got the dark blue that's almost purpley, and then the bright green here, and then kind of an in-between. So that's pretty good for blending, I think. So you can see this is pretty easy. And it's a great way to stretch your cut files uh, without going outside the box as far as what the cut file was designated for. So this is the file that was actually designed for an A2 card. So I haven't really done anything except cut this out with my machine and then go ahead and use it as a stencil. So now I have some distress uh, spray stain and picket fence. So this is white and I'm just going to let this go where it will. And the cool thing is it's going to go on both, but we're not going to see it underneath in the spaces where uh, the stencil is covering it, of course. And this stain actually ends up drying. It, it will pick up the color underneath it, so it's not going to be a bright white. Let me show you again. So you can see that it's kind of in the background. So I decided to add some brushed pewter, which is a metallic distress spray stain, uh, to get some silver on here, which I thought looked really cool. I like that this card, even though it is floral, I have chosen some more masculine colors. So you could give this to a guy. And I'm sure they probably wouldn't even notice that it was really flowers they would just kind of notice that it was a pattern so one cool thing that happened on the sample card was that i ended up getting a lot of the silver right here in the middle and so i decided to just take some extra stain and actually fill in the eye and that left a really cool effect once it was dry okay so what you wanna do before you lift this off is to make sure that it's completely dry. So you can use a heat tool or you can set it aside and just let it dry naturally. It should take about 15 minutes if you just let it dry or you can speed that up with your heat tool. All right, so this is completely dry and I thought I would pop back in here and show you the reveal before I go ahead and trim this down um, because this is probably the best part of doing a little project like this is finding out what you're gonna see underneath with the stencil. So I just need to pop that off. And isn't that awesome? I mean, that looks so cool. So I have this one, which I'm going to um, go ahead and cut down to the inside here. And then I have this one here that I'm going to cut down so that it fits on the four and a quarter by five and a half over the whole thing. Okay, so these guys are now completely cut down. And so now you can see what I mean about getting two for one. So I just did one cut and I'm getting two projects from it, which is really awesome. And actually, if I really wanted to, I could have saved all the little pieces from here and transferred them and actually got a third project. Uh, but I think two is really good enough for me. So let's start with the gift enclosure one and I will show you how to put that all together. So what you need to do is take a piece of eight and a half by 11 cardstock and cut it down to five and a half by 10. So you are gonna end up with like a little strip left over and then a little piece on the side here, a little one inch piece. So once you've done that, you're gonna go ahead and score at four and a quarter and then also at eight and a half. And this little eight and a half side is gonna make the little flap for your gift card enclosure. Okay, so I already have everything scored. So I'll go ahead and burnish that with my bone folder. And on this side, I'm just going to use some uh, double-sided adhesive. And I'm waiting to use up the rest of this roll because I have one from scrapbook.com waiting for me that I just can't wait to tuck into. 
Um, most double-sided adhesive like this is super, super sticky, and theirs is no exception. So just go ahead and pop off the backing. And then fold it straight over. And so then you've got a perfect little pocket here for a gift card. See how that fits in there so nice? You could even do it that way if you wanted to. However, you want, you still have plenty of room to write on both sides, really. So that's it for that. And then on this piece, I decided, well, I wanted to add some more metallic because I had these big empty spaces. So I just went ahead and die cut some circles from some tonic metallic cardstock. And I'm just going to go ahead and add those in, leaving a little border around the edge. And then I'll trim off the excess. So that way, it looks just, you know, it stays as a square piece. You don't have these little overhanging circles because you're gonna have those little bits of overhang. And as I'm doing this, I'm scanning my desk to try and find my scissors because I don't know where they are. Do -do -do. Oh, I see them. And this one here, I'm actually just going to put a little bit. Okay. Okay. Oh, there they, they were all the way across the desk. Okay, so now that I have that done, I can just go ahead and Cut these off the back. And then I can go ahead and adhere that to the card base. Of course, if you've been following my videos for any length of time you know I'm always using the Tombow mono adhesive. I love it and I am pretty pretty generous with it. Um, it works really well to keep things stuck down no matter what kind of environment you live in. If it's dry, if it's humid, a uh, tape runner always seems to peel up for me have, at some point. It's either too dry in the house or it gets too humid and things start to fall off. I find that with the Tombow it all sticks. All right, so I've got that all put together. And as a final, I can just go ahead and add some enamel dots. And these are from Alta New. And I did a couple of different shades of gray. And then uh, I did the dark color here from the Cool Summer Nights because that really kind of matched the blue that I ended up getting from this project. So what I did is I just um, took the different sizes. The large ones kind of landed on the metallics, but these medium ones fit right over a medium here. And then the small one fits over a little small dot down here. And I'm always doing them in threes uh, because threes are appealing to the eye. And on these, I, I picked different shades. And there you go. So that's the first card. Love it. And then of course the second one, um, really I just adhere this right on top of the card base. So this one couldn't get any easier. I've just got my bone folder disappeared. Oh, there it is. There we go. And this one just goes right on top. Super simple, but um, why waste this if you've already put all this distress ink on it? Um, it's a perfectly good card front. And you can see maybe on the back here that um, when I cut this, I did not have my settings right. So um, this backside is really quite destroyed. But that's okay because you're never going to see it once it gets glued down. 
It's all going to look fabulous. So for this one, I don't necessarily need to get ink every or uh, glue everywhere, just in some key places to make sure that it all stays stuck. And then since it is an edge to edge piece, I make sure that it does go from edge to edge. So I just grab it all the way down the corner here. There we go. So super simple. And you're going to get two cards for one cut. And I know you're just going to love it. So if you haven't yet, go ahead and grab out your freebie from scrapbook.com. And while you're there, if you need any of those other supplies, I've got links in the description. So you can pop on over and grab everything that you need to make these fantastic designs. Thank you so much for stopping by today. And until next time, happy crafting.